Bridge and white rails at bridge houses is a mid-19th century industrial scene of Sheffield by an unknown artist. Friends of Museum Sheffield raise funds to conserve this painting. The painting arrived in our studio for conservation and restoration treatment, which involves various stages. The painting was poorly secured in the frame with thick, old, rusted nails. These are bent back using pliers so that the painting can be removed from the frame. Before starting any treatment, the painting is photographed and its condition is fully documented. Shining the light across the surface of the painting from one side helps to reveal information of the painting's condition. In this case, the vertical structural cracks and old losses in the paint and crown layers become visible. Although cracked, the paint layers are securely adhered to the support and don't need treatment. Once the painting is photographed, it is placed face down on a table to treat the reverse. The old expansion keys are splitting and the wood is in poor condition, so these are removed. The reverse of the canvas is then cleaned using a vacuum and a dry cleaning sponge, which help to remove dust and dirt that have accumulated in the canvas wheel. New expansion keys are then inserted. These can be used to improve the tension of the canvas in the future. The keys are then secured to the stretcher so that they don't fall out and cause damage to the painting. The front of the painting is surface cleaned using hand rolled cotton wool swaps and a water based cleaning solution. Bridge and white rails at bridge houses has gathered a layer of grey dusty surface dirt over the years. This murky layer is now sitting on the front of the painting. Paintings used to be coated with natural resin varnishes, which have a tendency to discolour over time, as has happened with this painting. The thick varnish layers are carefully removed with solvents and the true bright colours of the painting are revealed. The solvents are also used to remove some overpaint that has been applied by previous restorers. In this case you can detect the overpaint because it appears darker in colour and has different texture in comparison to the original paint layer. Usually restorers applied overpaint to cover damages and abrasions. In the bridge house's painting some figures have been covered up and were revealed during the varnish and overpaint removal. This includes a figure of a man at the right hand side of the scene and a man on horseback in the central foreground area. A synthetic resin isolating varnish is applied to the front of the painting. This helps to saturate the paint layer and make the fillings and retouchings we apply easily reversible in the future. The paint and crown layer losses are filled with a white putty made out of chalk and a conservation binder. The original paint in the area of the horse rider was found to be damaged and abraded. Rather than retouching the damage, the previous restorer decided to cover up the whole area with a thick filler and overpaint. This is not something we do nowadays. Excess filling material is cleared from the surface of the painting using a swab. The fills are then lightly scraped with a scalpel to mimic the texture of the surrounding paint layer, helping to disguise the new fills. The old filler around the man on horseback is also textured using a scalpel because it appears extremely smooth and shiny in comparison to the original paint layer. Dry powdered pigments are mixed with synthetic resin to form a reversible retouching paint.
the felt losses and areas of abrasion are retouched in order to help the painting read well. Using a mole stick helps to keep the hand steady whilst retouching. Finally, the painting is varnished with several thin layers of synthetic resin varnish that are sprayed onto the painting. The rebate is then lined with paper tape and a piece of low reflective glass with UV filter is positioned in the frame. This will protect the painting against any knocks, scratches and dirt as well as the deterioration of varnish and paint layers that can be caused by ultraviolet light. Then balsa wood battens are placed to the edges of the glazing to create a gap between the glass and the painting. These are secured with paper tape and then lined with special tape for cushioning. Balsa wood spacers are also attached to the edges of the frame rebate to create a good fit for the painting. The painting is inserted into the frame and secured in place with framing strips. The frame is treated by the frame conservator, who cleans the frame and treats any cracks and splits. He attaches a wooden build out to the reverse of the frame, increasing its depth. This helps to protect the painting that used to stick out from the back of the frame. Finally, a hardboard backboard is attached to the reverse of the frame. This helps to keep dust and dirt away and protects the reverse of the painting from any impact. After spending several weeks in the conservation studio, bridge and white rails at bridge houses is now ready to return to Museum Sheffield.